How can a man lure a woman he likes into his nets? The demand for this art is as high today as it was thousands of years ago. And it must be said that our ancestors knew about it no less and maybe even more than us. The book of the Roman poet Ovid, The Art of Love, is an excellent confirmation of this. It will be a real guide for anyone who has ever thought about how to increase their success with women. Let's see what advice was given to novice seducers in ancient Rome. The first significant point that some men neglect, and some, on the contrary, are too keen here, is their own appearance. When meeting, it's important not to make a repulsive impression, so Ovid encourages young people to have a sense of proportion. But dress not like a fop, nor curl your hair, nor with a pumice make your body bare. Be not too finical, but yet be clean, and wear well-fashioned clothes like other men. Cure your unsavory breath, gargle your throat, and free your armpits from the ram and goat. So, you may not be as handsome as a movie star, but everyone can look neat. The same applies to clothing. Purity, simplicity, and even slight negligence, yes. Excessive grooming and a lot of perfume, no. One of the biggest problems for young men in dealing with girls is the fear of failure. Because of this fear, many don't even try to talk to girls they like. This also adds to the inferiority complex. How they say a woman like her can find me attractive. On this occasion, Ovid tells that firstly, whatever one might say, you will always have to make the first move yourself. Is there who thinks that woman first should woo? Lay by thy self-conceit, thou foolish bow. Secondly, the Roman poet tells what the right attitude should be. First then believe, all women may be won. Attempt with confidence, the work is done. The grasshopper shall first forbear to sing in summer season, or the birds in spring. Then women can resist your flattering skill. In she will yield, who swears she never will. Many men are afraid of instant rejection, but even if you immediately get a brush off, Ovid reminds us that the very fact of your attention flatters the girl, because this is another proof of her attractiveness. All women are content that men should woo, she who complains and she who will not do. So the most essential thing in the first stage is to accept the possibility of failure and take it easy. After all, no matter what you do, losses will always be. You need to perceive them as an inevitable part of the process, a very useful one. As you know, we learn from our mistakes. And if you still get rejected, the best way out is to look around and find another girl. By the way, where to search? This is not such a simple question as it might seem. And such a damsel drops not from the sky. She must be sought for with a curious eye. But if you live in a big city, the search is easier. Ovid lived in Rome, and something is always happening in the capital. For example, all sorts of fun events. There are a lot of girls there, and in general, they are in a good mood and don't mind chatting, otherwise they would not go there. Ovid tells us about typical Roman leisure places, like the amphitheater or the hippodrome. These overtures of love the circus gives, nor at the swordplay lest the lover thrives. For there the son of Venus fights his prize and deepest wounds are oft received from eyes. So, in crowded places, there are many convenient occasions for meeting and talking. When you have chosen who to talk to, but don't know how to start, the event you both came to would be the best subject of discussion. The main thing here, as Ovid advised, is not to be silent, and also to show that the girl is interesting to you. Then find occasion to begin discourse. Inquire whose chariot this, and who's that horse. Like what she likes, from thence you court begin, and whom she favors, wish that he may win. Dinner parties, which the Romans knew a lot, were also suitable places for a successful acquaintance. The important thing is not to drink too much and to remember that a girl's beauty can be deceiving in the twilight. As for the topics for a conversation, here the wine unleashed the tongue of even the most silent. Love sparkles in the cup and fills it higher. Wine feeds the flames and fuel adds to fire. But choose no mistress in thy drunken feet. Wine gilds too much their beauties and their wit. 
For some, the beginning of a conversation is the most challenging part, but this is a matter of practice. No wonder Ovid advised young people not to neglect the lessons of oratory. But let's say you've started a conversation. What to do next? After all, there are those for whom talking is easy, but things don't go beyond talking. In this case, Ovid explains in detail the small gestures of affection that will not cost you any effort, but certainly will not go unnoticed. Here, for example, is how the poet describes a scene in the Roman theatre. Light service takes light minds, for some can tell of favours won by laying cushions well. By funning faces some their fortunes meet, and some by laying footstools for their feet. If dust be on her lap, or grains of sand, brush both away with your officious hand. If none there be, yet brush that nothing dance, and still to touch her lap make some pretense. That is, you don't need to wait for the opportunity to show courtesy and care. Create this occasion yourself. Don't forget about compliments. Tell her her face is fair, her eyes are sweet, her taper fingers praise, and little feet. Such praises in the chaste are pleased to hear. Both maids and matrons hold their beauty dear. And finally, when the acquaintance took place and you would like to meet the girl again, you should let her know. Of course, tactfully and carefully, but you still have to act, because if you limit yourself to talking alone, the girl may even decide that you are not interested in her anymore, since you are not doing anything else. It's decent for a man to speak his mind. They but expect the occasion to be kind. As you can see, Ovid's tips to Roman men are handy and applicable in practice today, since the problem of relationships is equally important for all times and generations. So if you have been waiting for a sign to talk to the girl you like, here it is. Good luck and may Ovid help you.